So, before answering this question, let's try to calculate what is the consumer's willingness to pay once, since they are uncertain about the quality of the car, about the quality of the car. All right, so if you are a buyer, and since the information is asymmetric, now you know that a good quality car is worth $1,200 for you, uh, I'm sorry, $2,400 for you, and the lemons are worth $1,200 for you. But the problem is, I don't know, and, and half of the cars are lemons and half of the cars are good. And the problem is you don't know what type of car you're facing. So on average, what would be your willingness to pay? All right. Well, on average, we assume that the agents are expected utility maximizers. So we have to calculate the expected utility of the consumer if he purchases the car. So his utility is going to, this is going to be a realized utility, but before ex ante, before making the buy decision, you don't know if this car is going to bring you 1200 utility or 2400 utility. All right. So therefore in expectation, with one health probability, the car is going to bring you 1200 utility. Plus, with one health probability, it's going to bring you 2400 uh, uh, utility. All right? Minus the price that you're going to pay. So, your expected utility is going to be this. If you buy the car, if purchase the car, which you don't know the quality, if not purchase the car, your utility will be zero. So what is that equal to? Well, this is equal to, uh, this is 600, this is 1200, so this is 1800 minus P, okay? So this is what your utility will be if you purchase the car. Expected utility, all right? So what does that tell me? That tells me that the consumers, the buyers, who can't distinguish the quality of the car, they're willing to pay at most $1,800. So consumers, the buyers, because the information is asymmetric, the buyer's willingness to pay is $1,800. So it's not $2,400, it's not $1,200, it's just the average. And the reason is, as I said, we calculate the expected utility of buying the car and it's $1,800 minus P. That means any price above $1,800 are not going to be accepted by the sellers, uh, by the buyers, because they're going to say, oh, maybe this is a good car. All right, so let's say the price is 2000 Well, maybe this is a good car, but you know what? It may also be a lemons because the, I mean, in this world, the sellers do not have to be trustworthy. They do not have to tell the truth, right? I mean, the, the, the sellers, we assume implicitly, and now I am making this assumption explicitly, the sellers are opportunistic. I mean, they will do their best to maximize their own uh, uh, payoff. And so they are willing to, I mean, they are going to sell the highest possible price they can, even if their cars are lemons, all right? So they don't have any, uh, um, you know, emotional, psychological, or ethical problems of lying. So even if I own a lemon, I am willing to sell my car to you at a price $2,400 or $2,000. Yes, I know it's lemon, but I'm going to sell it because it makes me more money. Well, the problem is, is like, th does that make me bad person? Well, there is no such consideration in this framework. All right. So therefore, if the price is $2,000, the buyer is going to say, well, it could be a good car, but it could also be a bad car, a lemon. And the, the seller is just lying to me. I can't say that. I mean, I can't say if this seller is lying or not. So you know what? In expectation, therefore, I shouldn't be paying more than $1,800 because otherwise, if I pay $2,000, what's going to happen is that 
yes, I'm going to make, again, if, if I pay, say, $2,000, this is two, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make $400, 2400 minus 2000 400 dollar net benefit if the car is good but if it is lemon i am going to make minus 800 dollars loss all right uh, if it is lemon so with one health probability uh you know what i am actually going to make minus 200 loss so so in expectation, if I purchase this car at a price 2000, I'm going to make a loss in expectation. So this is a lottery where I'm going to win $400, but I may lose $800. So in expectation, I'm going to lose $200. So maybe, not maybe, I should definitely not buy this lottery and so not trade. You see what I mean? So for that reason, <coughs> I'm sorry, the buyers, are not going to pay more than $1,800. The question is, well, if the buyers are not willing to pay more than $1,800, what will the sellers do? Well, the sellers of good cars will never uh, ask or accept price lower than uh, 2000. Agree? So if I own a good car, I will definitely not sell it because if I sell my car at a price lower than 2000, I'm going to make a loss. So therefore, sellers of good cars will not be able to, uh, so therefore sellers of good cars won't trade their cars so in this market there's no way the good car owners can sell their cars so what does that mean well there are also sellers of bad cars sellers of lemons well they accept any price they accept any price above uh, 1,000, right? Yes, that's true. And the sellers, uh, the consumers were paying all the way up to $1,800. So it seems like the sellers, the lemon owners can actually sell their cars. But the thing is, so there's a, 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 a new update. The buyers the consumers should reason further and say, hey, you know what? Uh, as, as buyers, we're not willing to pay more than $1,800. That should mean because the, the good car owners are not going to sell their cars below, I mean, at that price, $1,800. The good car owners should be out of the markets, right? So they're, we're not going to be able to, I mean, they're not going to be uh, selling their cars. And so all the, all the sellers that I see in the market who are willing to sell their cars at a price 1800 or lower should be the lemon owners. Let me repeat. If I see, so once again, as a buyer, I am not going to purchase any car, any price tag above $1,800. Agree? Okay. If I see a car seller who is a, a, the, who's selling his car or her car with a price tag less than or equal to $1,800, this is going to give me an information. This information, this price is giving me an information which says, oh, this car owner should actually own a lemon because if it was a good car, well, this seller would never agree to accept a price lower than $2,000. So if I'm seeing a price lower than 1800, it must be a lemon. So you know what? If I'm seeing a price lower than 1800, this gives me an information about the quality of the car and this car must be a lemon. So therefore, I'm not going to pay $1800 for a lemon. I'm going to pay only $1200 at most. So therefore, the bottom line is that 
in this market, when there is asymmetric information, only the lemons will be traded, and the price is going to be somewhere between 1200 and 1000 Because all those prices, the lemon owners are willing to sell, and all those prices, the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the buyers are willing to pay for those lemons. Okay? Well, you may, so again, in this market, when there is a asymmetric information, good cars will not be sold. Only the lemons will be sold and the market price is going to be in this range. So this is clearly inefficient. Why is that? Well, because the buyers are actually willing to pay $2,400 for a good car. But the problem is they can't understand which car is which. And that negatively influences their uh, willingness to pay. And so this decreased price... Uh, cause them further update their beliefs. It's like, well, I mean, 1800 or below, no good car owners will sell it. And so it must be only the lemons. And so they are going to decrease the price even further. Okay. I mean, their willingness to pay will decrease even further. So you may kind of say, oh, you know what? Maybe some of the good car owners are going to charge another price. PH say equals to of, I don't know, uh, $2,000, all right? So yes, there are low car, I'm sorry, there's a low price P, but there's a high price 2000. So maybe this is gonna signal uh, that the car owner actually owns a good car. Well, think about this situation. So there's one guy, one seller, who's asking $2,000. Is this gonna give the buyers any information? Uh, well, it can be a high quality uh, car owner, but it can be a low quality car owner who is just lying. So I can't really say. I mean, I can't say who is lying, who is telling me the truth. So what I'm going to think is, well, it's 50-50. So with 50% of the chance, it's a good car owner and he's honest guy and asking $2,000. Or with 50% of the chance, it is actually a lemon owner and he's a liar and he just pretends as if he's a good car owner. So therefore, if I pay $2,000 in expectation, I shouldn't be paying more than $1,800, all right? So therefore, nobody's going to buy the $2,000 price a car. Well, let's say it's $1,800. Will they buy it? Well, again, the same thing. Uh, the buyers are willing to pay it, but the problem is the buyers, they have to think strategically. Look, $1,800, this is a red flag, man, because I know that if, if, if the seller owns a good car, he will not sell it at a price lower than $2,000. So therefore, a, a, a guy who is willing to sell this price shouldn't be a good good car owner. It's just a lemon owner who's lying to me. Obviously, I'm not going to accept that as a, as a buyer because I know that it's lemon. So that information, so the price gives information. All right. So that's very important. Price, the market price is going to give information to the consumers, to the buyers, and they're going to update their beliefs about uh, whether the car is a good car or the bad car. All right. Um, yeah, basically that's it. That's what the used car or the lemons problem is uh, in a nutshell. I hope that was clear.